Hi guys, welcome back. Um, we're on 31 days. Can you actually believe it? I cannot. Uh, we took a sort of ship type thing here and now we need to travel further on forward and see how everything goes. Welcome back. <laughs> I haven't said that already. Uh, okay. Grand Bazaar. Let's plan our journey. Alright, we're at the here. Calbla. Oh no, you're no one out there. Tomorrow at 8am. Yeah, that's the only way I can go, to be honest, unless I'm going backwards, and I don't really fancy going backwards, so I will go that way. Let's stay in a hotel, and at 8am, Tehran was a city of inventions and artifacts wrapped around ancient grandeur. Bay Ador airship floated between Minaris and Moscou and churches spired glowing gold in gaslight. Uh, I sought out engineers and found them in the calves, drinking heavily, heavily sweetened coffee and racing their inventions across tabletops. I spoke to the metal forge, an older woman whose muscular arms bulged under her cartor leaned close Cartor leaned closer. The other artifactors call us mere blacksmiths, she said, waving her burn spotted hands. But but because they have made their wounds. Oh, blah, blah, blah. English. See, this is what I'm saying. This game is not my friend. Because they have made made their wondrous devices if we didn't first hammer out uh, the copper sheets and spin their wires it is fine work i remarked the finest a middle-aged fellow by the name of rafquin remarked in other cultures a copper lily may have been enough for an artificer to complete their education but we all apprentices to other guilds and craftsmen to truly make a ton we must be jewelers, artifactors, shipwriters, cobblers, doctors, dancers. But then you must learn endlessly. <laughs> Ref Quinn smiled. Is that not what human culture is? Is that not what Tahran is? Endless learning pound into buildings and gardens and inventions. I swallowed. Are you sure you're not a poet? And I am a dancer too, Ref Quinn winked, and we clinked our coffee glasses together. Someone further in called out um, to Ash, uh, ah, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> and we all raised our cups, and some wag added, um, may he live forever under the watchful eye of the Prime Minister. And everyone laughed. That is to uh, that is my a uh, bidding memory of Turan. Um A place where people could be both right and humane, all in the same place. A rare thing in this world of ours. It is a city I am sure that will stand forever. Alright, let's get going. Embark on the journey. Yeah, he's really low on health, my guy, so I'm scared I'm going to kill him. Unless that's the point. A black metal horde, horse reared and pound uh, the Kamara, um, a masterpiece of Ottoman style powered by a new type of Persian engine. It ran from Istanbul through, to, through the per, um, Persian Empire and all the way to the British frontier city of Kabul. I was sorry to be leaving Tehran, a place of true 
impossibility. Still, the um, Kumar Tal left us in no doubt that we were leaving. This engine's fired and we rocketed away through the railways. Oh, yes, heal him. I feel a shade improved. You don't need it. One of the American porters nudged the Pashtun friend and muttered something uncomplimentary as he watched me struggle to load things into the luggage cart. It is rude to stare, I told them hauntingly. You look very strange for a servant, said the Armendian fellow. Those names turned down to be Abadjian? I am not sure. Um, I looked the man level in the eyes. You look rather strange yourself, I sniffed, gestured to their port uniforms which were a disrealm mixture of Persian and Ottoman fashion. They only laughed pitifully in response. Monsieur Abjan tucked a purple lamb wool pashmina around my neck. Perhaps this will help, he said, rather hopelessly. I felt like a prized dog, but Monsieur made no comment, distracting my... Attracted by the whistles and the scorts which marked uh, our departure from Tehran. Huh. Oh no, he's losing health. No, don't lose health. You're not allowed. I must mend him. I woke to the gentle rumble of the train and dressed quickly, deciding to fold my scarf into my pocket as a sort of lucky charm. That is not to say, my friend, that I am superstitious man, but a well-meant gift is not a thing to be taken lightly. Monsieur Frog saw it peep, peeking out and raised an eyebrow. Very vibrant, he remarked. Would you like it, monsieur? I asked, holding the parchment, parch, parchment out to him. Monsieur Frog hesitated a moment, looking at my outstretched hand and then took the scarf with calm deli deliberation. Thank you, Passepout, he said equally, um, equal equally, <laughs> tucking it away. I was stunned and merely muttered some response. My master in possession of a flagrant purple scarf it was still flabbergasted by the time that Kamir Tal pulled into it. He hurt her, I think. I'm not sure what these places are called anymore. If I'm pronouncing them wrong, I'm sorry. On the border of the Persian Empire and the frontier of the Britain Indian colonial islands. Yeah, we need to like really help him out because he's losing. He's, he's dying here. Like really badly. We had our papers inspected by the Persian customs officer with a pair of magnificent extended spectacles made from polished brass and engraved with Faris script along the arm. He inspected the documents whilst turning a small lever um, behind his ear. A pair of smoked glass lenses slipped over the clear ones and he inspected our documents once more. You are widely travelled. We're travelling around the world, I blurted. I could nearly hear my master refrain from rolling his eyes. Oh well, it is none of my business, the officer remarked, um, psy psychosophily? I don't know. Our papers are in order. Your papers are in order. Good luck with your travels. With your travels. We're... we're we repeated much the same experience with the British customs officer a few hours later, and so we arrived at Kabul, thoroughly inspected and officially stamped. Cool. We are here. Kabul. There's nothing here I can buy. Air traveller set, air traveller set, engineer set. Uh, I need to plan. Let's plan. Oh. Where 
face today. Nothing here. Go for it. Just go, 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 go. Go! Tlack Road Palamaquin. We hired a mechanical palaquin for the journey and clambered aboard. I could not hope for a better gentleman. The Grand Truck Road stretched from Afghanistan to Belgor um, was an ancient trade route. The Makruyas had once used it to trade the ancient Greeks, and now the British Empire had revamped the st um, stored it and um, revamped and restored it for their own purpose. Mechanical palaquins laid with good trade goods jolted alongside troops of transports and I'm going to butcher this Tervikvik steam carriages imported from England. All were brightly painted, each one bearing an individual mark and had no doubt the traders and drivers and perhaps even their families had mixed their own sweats with the paint. The day's journey passed quickly, a blur of colours and sounds, and it was only as the sun dipped below the horizon that the palaquins lit their fluorescent lamps that I realised we had reached the city of Lamhore. Australia! I see there's a boat that will cross the sea. This is ocean here. Okay. Where have I got to go? Baku. Gora, Madras, and Baku. Novagora. Ah, uh, Novagora's there. I'd have to go down. Madras. Novagora and Madras. I'm not going to get a boat then, then. Alright. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go down. We pass the night here. For, the si for a series of circumstance too treacherous to desire, I found myself lost in a labore and rescued by a man who bore the name Azad and who, to my luck, spoke English like a native. Most here speak Punjabi, he told me, through um, the British. Um, through the Bishes have decreased... Uh, the official language to be Urdu. Uh, do. do you speak Punjabi too? I asked. Truthfully, you are very learned. Most people here speak more than one language. Uh, but some languages, he hesitated, some are more political than others. I thought on what he had said. I would not give up French, I said firmly. Not for all the office. Um, official degrees in the world. The Punjabis agree. The Punjabis agree with you, Monsieur Azad shrugged. A language is not only a tool for conversation, but also learnt history, literature. It is culture itself, and then culture changes also. I was once an idealist, but no longer. And why not? I wrote a poem. He said to me bleakly, and it ruined my life. Is that so? He had come from a family of intellectuals in Delhi. His father politically supported the Emperor Ahura Shah against British rule during the Indian Mutiny. 
Monsieur Azard wrote a particular scrathing uh, quarrel in the high uh, de Arab, Arab is that? No, that's Akbar. The mutiny failed, the British troops entered their home, accused Azar's father and exiled and exiled Azar Azard. So I came to Lahore and now I work for the um, for the British in the po in the post office. He concluded gently, My father would be ashamed. Are you ashamed? No I'm not. He stood a little straighter. I am it is not such a bad life. I have found causes to fight for other than Indian independence. Then your brother would be proud. You think so? Monsieur Azad looked witful. Thank you for saying as much in any case. It is a kind thing to do. We reached the main road and I found my bearings. Do not go to Delhi, he begged, seizing my hand. Um, it swallows kind men like you. I am not so kind, I assured him with a laugh. I'm sure Delhi will split me up rather than swallow me. You should continue through um, Berens rather than the capital, he insisted. It's only a day's journey from here to Atim Atimuk. It took I took my leave from Monsieur Azard's from Lahore, but I had to suggest I had to suggest urge to speak French for a few days after, much to Monsieur Frog's current. Uh, he's advising me to go a different way. Did I ah? Uh, but if I go there, I won't be able to get. Alright, I know what I'm doing, but I need to check the market. When do you leave? When does it go? Not helpful. Market needed. Hong Kong. Oh, yeah. Alright, let's go. I will take the man's advice. And the ship says off. We took a sleek metal can Sagra Atomic from Lahore to Benares. Capital Flagin was a locobotomous woman um, who took pains to make us welcome, as she knew Monsieur Azad, who had given me the directions in Lahore. How is my good friend? Still a dreamer, I told her, though he would most likely deny it. I'm glad to hear you say it. She slapped me on the back. Perhaps he will write a poem again, someday. I judged her age to be similar to Major Azad's. Are you also a poet? Captain Flagin grinned and tucked her bright yellow scarf more securely around her neck. Do you know of the ancient Begil poem Shadaras? I have no interest in poetry, I informed her. I did not think... I did not think I did, until Azad showed me the right poem. She said, with a changing look, perhaps you will be lucky enough to find a friend to do the same for you. Maybe. Alright. Oh, oh! It's giving me day 35 of 100. Oh my god, are you kidding me? It's gonna take me 120 days? Uh uh, no. Yo. Great. Uh, we tethered the Benares a few hours later, scorned on the banks of grounds which curved in glittery trails over the horizon. Benares. We are here. Earth plan.
tomorrow 11 a.m. Let's explore and see what we find. Ah. Uh. The Hindus believe. The Hindus. Sorry. That won't read myself. Believe that to die in a sacred city of Banaras is to achieve salvation. I am not, Monsieur Frog observed, at all certain that hold truth for non Hindus. So I do not recommend testing this hypothesis, puss about. He gave me a pointed look, and I puffed up in in a front. Monsieur, I began rather um, hotly. Surely you do not think that I, pass about, would <laughs> am given to risky misadventures and ra rash decision making, that I would s allow such thing as emotion or curiosity to override my rational f um, facilities? Surely, monsieur you would not be so falsely accuse a man in your service. Monsieur Frog looked for a moment, as though some kind of surpass had come upon him. I thumped him hard on, on the back, I thumped him hard on the back, thinking he must be choking, and he made a small cut-off sound of ex... ex ugh. Ex exhalation, exhalation, um, before pressing a fist against his lips. After a moment, he straightened up, a cool mask once more firmly in place. Puss about, he said calmly, you are the most singular valet I have ever encountered. Now, do fetch me a cup of tea. <laughs> I often wondered about the moment in um, Benares. Are all English gentlemen so inscurable, or have I chosen a particular strange example of breed? A strange example of breed. Oh my god. I can't do that journey. But... Ah! 46 minus. Elephant. Mechanical elephant so cool all right well i'm gonna end it here thank you guys for watching i hope you have enjoyed and we will continue on from bananas in the next episode bye guys